All right, what is up? Here we go, YouTube. So today we're gonna be doing, uh, hitting the next step in getting uh, this thing built is we're gonna be doing the posts. So all of the, uh, the posts here, we're gonna be going through putting these guys up, flip it around here. So we're gonna be going through this, the process of uh, a couple pieces. And this is kind of, this is really the most, one of the most integral parts of the, the patio build are these posts. So these posts, as, as we go, let's start with away from the house, as we come away from the house, the, the, the patio does slope down about three to four inches from one side to the other. That's so water can you know, drain off. This wasn't covered till very recently. But um, what we got, is we got a, a steady drop from here all the way to here. So we need to ensure that we have the same height of posts, um, or not the same height, excuse me, but um, making sure that the, the beam is level all the way across the top as we go, as we go down. So I go over how we found that um, and how, how you get to that. And then we go through the process of securing the post bases um, so the post to the base, uh, and another integral part of making sure when you're putting the, the posts in that from this side all the way to this side, each on each row, so front row, middle beams or middle posts, and then the far posts there, that they're the equal distance apart from each other in each of the rows. And that's going to help to make sure that you don't run into any issues with also with the the beams that go across the top here and making sure that those are right in line with each other as you go all the way down on each side so the posts are going to really serve as, as two main pieces here and really some of the most important pieces the the width right and ensuring that the width is the same from each row and then the height of each post will dictate how high obviously it will be but ensuring that that is level um, is key so we're going to be going over those processes uh, in this video and then talking a little bit about um, these uh, these posts are these uh, what are called column caps from strong tie um, so we got two L brackets here we got a bracket there, a bracket there, and then again, same thing over there, over there, and there. So we'll just be going over real quick um, those uh, and what they look like, um, and then we'll be set. So really appreciate you guys for watching, checking this out. I hope you're appreciating and, and enjoying the, uh, the kind of the build process here. I know these are a bit more in-depth, longer um, videos, but the process is, isn't quick, it isn't easy, and this is really what you'll be doing and what you'll be going through as you, if you were going to build something like this yourself. So again, appreciate you for watching. Enjoy. Peace. All right. Another day on the, the project here for the roof. Now, as you can see, I've already got this post up. And what we did, so we had to measure the distance between each one of these brackets where they sit and also the height of the bracket. So we knew how tall to cut each one based on its height. So a couple ways you can do that. You could either have a, uh, a rotating laser. You set your height on the rotating laser, um, probably when it's dark out because when it's bright out, it's gonna be really hard to see the, the laser, but um, you can use that to find all your, your, uh, your heights. Um, or the tool that we used a little surveying scope and a uh, tape measure start down here go all the way up you find the level with the surveying scope um, and you turn it around to make sure it's level 360 degrees and then once you have that you turn it over to each spot where the post is and you get a measurement um, I'll show you what that looks like I'll probably throw it up on the screen here um, but uh, that gets you your measurements and to know how tall each one of them needs to be at each location and where in the post that needs to sit. So we pull in here where this one sat was about three quarters of an inch um, to the left to get it perfectly in line with the rest of these brackets uh, going down. We got it as close as 
we could during uh, during installation, but with every, with a little bit of, uh, of measurement from this post to the post on the other side over there behind the all the stuff that post behind right next to those uh, those blue cushions there. Um, we did that with each set to get the, the exact distance they all need to be uh, from each other. Um, so two important things, height of the posts, cut the size, uh, obviously label all of them um, as we see here. <clears throat> and that gets us exactly in line for each post. So then we put the bracket on and we run the beams down. The beams are gonna be perfectly straight or within reasonable margin um, all the way down the line on both sides and then once we get that once we get those pieces we can then figure out where up here the middle beam is going to sit so this is a four roughly a 412 pitch on the roof um, so for every you know, 12 inches uh, you go four inches um, and that gets you your 412 pitch. Uh, I should say for every four inches down, 12 inches over, that's kind of where you get it. Um, fairly common. You'll get your 612, your 812s, uh, but uh, this is a 412 pitch. So that'll help us also understand where we're bringing the beams and the rafters down on both sides. It's gonna start over here. So it's gonna follow the roof line up and then roughly about in here, this area, is where we're estimating the beam is going to sit to then start sloping back down uh, to meet up on that side so there we go we're getting them cut we're getting them set putting a level on them uh, so once you get your posts in you need to make sure that you got level both directions so there we're level and there we're level uh, there we go uh, I would recommend not using this uh, particular brand, this uh, Capro, I don't know, was this something I found off of Amazon? The issue is that, especially on a six by six, maybe a four by four, you'll be fine, but this uh, elastic actually gets stretched pretty, pretty far and it will cause this to kind of open up on the, uh, on the corner of the, the pillar. So get yourself a good one. Um, it'll save yourself a lot of time. And messing with it, I ended up using some, uh, some rebar uh, tie wire to uh, to get it held in place, uh, which isn't necessarily the the uh, most ideal method. But there we go. So we're gonna go ahead, work on the rest of these posts, getting them set, getting them leveled, getting ready for the beams. All right, y'all.
wanted to give you guys a little tip here. If you run into an instance or an issue, anytime you're close, working close between areas where you cannot get a typical drill, right? So I can't get this thing in here, but we do have this attachment that DeWalt makes. I'm sure other uh, companies make it as well. But we have a little, it's uh, impact rated. Um, but we have the ability to now extend this out and do a really nice, quick, sharp turn with it. So let me give you a little idea here on how this thing handles. Like I said, it is impact rated. So I'm not gonna be breaking it off. If you're gonna be using it on an impact drill, you definitely wanna make sure it is impact rated. There we go. We got this, the uh, the SDS screws that come with these <clears throat> base plates installed. CBSQ66. Um, the difference between a CB66 um, and a CBSQ66 is that uh, I believe first of all that the the S they come with the uh, SDS bolts, and then the um, standoff, the one inch standoff plate. A lot of uh, a lot of permitting and a lot of codes are going to require that you have a one inch standoff and this just gives you that instant one inch standoff um, that way your board even though this is pressure treated it will still rot over time so if you keep it up off the ground and when you're doing your concrete you kind of create a little slope here this does slope a little bit i don't know if we can really get a good visual of that but it does go down just a little bit from left to right so with push the water away and we'll also be putting um, about 30 inches up we're gonna have uh, a little uh, bottom uh, column um, cap around it or uh, uh, something to kind of dress up the bottom here so about here down so that's gonna cover up that and then from about 30 inches up we're going to be uh, wrapping it in cedar there we go. One thing I forgot to mention was, or at least describe here anyway, was the uh, how we figured out how tall all the posts needed to be. So the first step was we needed to figure out, since this is existing, um, and we're going to be putting the, the, um, the, the beam up against the house, we'll actually be cutting through the house and, uh, and securing it. Technically, we don't need to really secure it to the home here, because this is already anchored here. I am going to go in and put in a, um, I have a strong tie bracket that will be connecting in here. Um, but really it's gonna be just so it looks a little bit more flush, a little bit better um, as it goes in uh, to the house. Instead of having a wrap around it, it'll just slide right in. But anywho, um, what you need to do is you gotta figure out, first of all, how thick the sheeting is on the existing roof because we want to match it up so that the, there is no difference between height in the shingles here. Um, so in this case, this is half inch. So we measured, so from half inch, we get our, our rough estimate of where the top of the roof is once it's sheeted. And that gives us the ability to come down and make calculation to where the column or the beam is gonna go in. So that when we have the beam in, it's going to, all of the, the sheeting will flit, fit flush up against here. This also gives us our initial measurements for the rafters and how the rafters are going to come in. Um, they are going to tail off into a two by four here. Um, and then they'll have a bird's mouth. They are two by tens, so the bird's mouth will come down and then follow up as we go up there. Um, so that will be to come, but I just wanted to show you kind of, you know, kind of work backwards from to be able to set your posts, you need to know where the column is gonna come in. And then where the column is gonna come in, you need to figure out 
with your sheeting where the top of that column is gonna be. So it's not too high, forcing it up, not too low, um, laying down. And you also have to take into consideration the measurement of your two by, in this case, two by 10, or if you're using two by sixes or whatever have you, so that you have enough room to play when we come in here. So roughly, right, your two by four, we're gonna have it over, and then we're gonna bring it down from there. But that is what we did for the measurements to figure out then where this post sat and the height of this post. And then, like I was saying earlier, we took the surveyor um, scope and we were able to tell how at the base, where the base stood in reference to all the rest of the bases as we go around. And then that tells us, okay, and there also was a slope about a, a roughly a three and a half, four inch slope from the, from the house all the way out to the end to again push water away from the home um, so we have to take all that into consideration um, as we go through so that all of our our posts are level as as level as they could be all the way across um, we can make up a little bit of it with the it's a um, I believe it's a quarter inch uh, thick um, post cap that we're going to be using um, again with strong tie all the way down but really the preference is you have those things sit and flush and that's why we did it exactly the way we did it um, and got it uh, as level as we possibly could. All right, now, once the posts are up, as we've done already, now we have the brackets. So I went a little bit, a uh, little bit stronger on the, the bracket setup that I have. So we have the strong tie, um, what do we got here? This is the, uh, CCQ or ECCQ um, bracket that goes on top of the posts uh, where we just have a beam obviously coming in one way going out the other way no intersections um, in the beams at all and actually this is uh, the part number here uh, E or uh, CCQ6 being that it's a six by six um, so six here and then six here for our posts and our beams um, so we got four of these that we're going to be putting on um, and these are going to hold the beams as they go across and then we also have the um, ccq i believe this is the um, eccLr being that it's the right side six 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 so you're going to have a six beam here a six beam here and a six post here essentially is the setup there spin this around so and this comes with the uh, two and a half inch uh, SDS screws as well <clears throat> so you have one beam obviously goes this way typically this <coughs> this would be the the part of the beam that sticks out of the corner and then you uh, you extend the the beam past I'm actually gonna flip these um, being that the front beam that I have is uh, it's about 23 feet long um, so I'm not gonna rest that 23 foot beam um, glue lamb beam just on this little bracket with nothing underneath of it right so I'm gonna switch mine I'm gonna put this and it's gonna go like this so this is gonna be the right side we have a beam coming in here and this side and it's gonna obviously butt up against that and then the beam that goes the lengthwise is gonna sit right here and so let me show you all that so from that post the top of that post it'll actually be resting on the top of the post here and then going all the way across to the uh, to the other post here and resting on top of that post all the way across so Get a little bit more, a um, little bit more contact with the the beam as it's going to go all the way across, and then the the beams that go this way, these are only, well they're they're 12 feet long, but will be cut down to uh, to size, right? So you have a lot less, and then you have one, two, three posts holding it up. So ultimately, going to get you a little bit better structural um, connection. By, uh, by running them the other way. But there we go. 
so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna start getting these uh, these post uh, brackets on or uh, what I believe strong tie calls column caps um, there's the L column cap they have the standard column cap and there's also a T column cap so a T I don't have one but essentially the idea of a T is you're gonna have the beam going from both sides and then you're gonna have one coming out of the middle of the bracket which would then connect over to the other post over here and then you'd have a, a support in the middle uh, based on we, how we have it built and the way that the uh, the weight's gonna be laid out was not needed um, for uh, for this setup. But if you're looking, they do have them. Um, they're a little bit harder to find because they're not as um, they're not as popularly used. And actually, from all of the construction um, and things that I've looked at, even larger um, units and larger setups don't necessarily even have these sorts of brackets. I see a lot of them with just uh, with just L brackets. Like I'll show you these. Um, these we have here so like something like this which is a six by six l bracket this i'm just adding for an additional uh, structural integrity of of the p the the post that goes in between the middle that goes up as a jack to the uh the beam that grows across to the top uh, and then it just got your standard uh, just flat t that you'll probably see this is typically the most widely used um bracket with these sorts of things but i like the way that these look um they work quite a bit more um i want to say those those l brackets were something like 200 and something bucks a piece something 220 250 something like that for these um, from the supplier i got them from and these were i want to say 120 130 uh per each one of those so um ultimately these were actually quite a bit of, of the expense uh, but a nice solid uh, connection system is just as important as as just how you you lay out your structure in general so obviously we've got these brackets that went down in to um, to the the concrete um, and reinforce the concrete as well as reinforce the bracket into uh, into the post itself uh, so really uh, really decided to make this a bit more substantial those are even going to be covered up anyway so i mean the fact that they're there is just more structural than uh, than anything else but uh, but there we go so we're going to start putting these uh these brackets up these column caps up and then uh, and then we can start uh placing our our beams into the the caps and finding out where it's going to meet the house on both sides uh, and then once we have that the the next important piece is just measuring from here to here getting the midpoint going up to where we're going to uh to be putting the beam and then for our installation we have half inch sheeting up there now we did three and a half inch sheeting um for the roof over this so we'll just need to bring it down a quarter inch and then we'll have a uh a flat mating surface between the old structure and uh, and the new structure so we'll go ahead let's get that set